You are in for a treat today. Why? We're going to talk about entrepreneurship, money. We're going to talk about business. Yes, we're going to talk about investments. What has this got to do with the Bible, with God, with serving Him? Some people say, no, let's not talk about those things. Let's talk about it because we want God to be involved in every area of our life. Be very blessed. Welcome to New You. Our topic for today, five frugal holiday shopping tips. For those who still need to do some holiday purchases for the season, here are some shopping tips that are good for your wallet. One, split your shopping list. The first column contains things you can buy online, and the second one is for items that require a trip to the store. Overload the first column because overspending also happens when you go around from one store to another. Two, avoid social media. Posts on Pinterest or Facebook indirectly affect our buying behavior. Strictly stick to your shopping list. Three, don't shop when you're hungry, thirsty, or tired. This triggers mindless purchasing. We tend to buy something we don't need in exchange of what we actually need. Four, dress as a smart shopper. Research shows that even the clothes we wear when we shop affect our buying behavior. So wearing a decent but comfortable outfit can make us feel like a wiser shopper. Five, buy multiples. A study shows that recipients of common items are often as happy as when they receive special and unique gifts. So consider buying five beautiful similar items for five beautiful friends from one store, then going to five different stores in search of a special gift for each person. You don't have to spend much to have an awesome Christmas season. Remember that Christmas is about Jesus' birthday, so spend it meaningfully with Him. We are on our big day, actually, of our financial series. Did God bless you in our series, the financial series called G? Did He speak to you? Did you learn a lot of good practical things? Well, today we're going to celebrate big day. So we're not done yet, all right? Touch your neighbor and say, you're not done yet. We're going to learn a new practical thing today. And you're going to be so blessed. Now... We do this every single time, even if you're a newcomer, you might want to join us, all right? I know this might not be comfortable with you, but with you, but we like raising our hands in this place because it's a symbol of surrender. It's a symbol of humility. So if you're able and if you're welcome, would you join me in lifting our hands all over this place as we say our family prayer today? Are you guys ready? All right, and all together, on the top of your voice, everybody say, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'm not going to preach to you the word today. I've called somebody. In fact, he's such a blessing to us. This guy has so much wisdom, experience, and humility. I want you to give a warm welcome to the builder of Feast Mall of Asia, Brother Didoy Labaton. Good morning. We are on our big day of this series and one big message for today is this multiply your supply to multiply your service one more time read it and we're gonna be reading from the Bible about the multiplication of bread 
before I read this, just to frame it, this Bible story about the multiplication of the bread, it's all about the Eucharist. But since we're in a financial series, we could pick up some financial principles on the side. And why not? Because uh, I believe our God is, is also interested in our finances and he, he made us whole. So in all areas of our lives, God is interested. And here's the verse from John 6, verse 5 to 7. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. And then Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a Bite. So imagine there's an impossible situation. Everybody say impossible. Can you relate? Sometimes there's an impossible situation in your life. Yeah. Masaya pa ngayon kasi may 13 month pay pa, may Christmas bone. Oh, wala na. Ubus na. First principle, let me show this to you. First is this. You have to remember that miracles would start with need. If there is no great need, there is no need for a great miracle. So if you are in need right now, not just in finances, but in any area of your life, if you are in need, I'm going to tell you, get ready for a miracle. Because miracles happen when there is a great need. You want your healing? You want your relationships to be restored? You want your spirituality to be reborn again? Get ready for a miracle. You know, when Jesus Christ, that we celebrate, He's going to be born during Christmas, the Christ in Christmas, get ready for a miracle. First step, if you want to have a miracle, if you want to have a multiplication, how many here want some multiplication in their lives? This is what you need to do. Number one, you got to find people who are hungry. Find people who are hungry. Because there will be no multiplication of the bread when there will be no people who will eat it. Again, find a great need, multiply it, find it. And in the past few talks, we've been talking about how to be a problem solver. If you solve problems for people, that's some sort of a business, yeah? You fill up a need, then you get to feed people, and then you earn from it. Be a problem solver. Are, am I making sense to you? I want you to look for people who are in need. Find people who are hungry. Because that's where your miracles will come from. That's where your finances will grow. If you feed more people, if you fill up their need, then you will find your supply. Second step is this. Aside from being a problem solver, Sometimes, if you want to be a problem solver, sometimes you don't have all the solutions, yeah? Raise your hand if you don't have a solutions from time to time. <laughs> and sometimes when we feel that way, we feel so little. We feel na wala tayong kwenta. We feel that we are not good enough, yes? How many insecure people are in the house? Welcome home. Hospital for sinners and insecure people. We got to fill up that need. Here's step number two. We got to fill up that need with the little that we have. Remember, five loaves and two fish. The little boy had. I, 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 I know, I feel, and I believe God did not make a mistake when the little boy was the representation of that little thing that we have. And if we offer it to God, wag mong mamalitin ko anong meron ka. Ah, wag na wag. Ah, in English, stop looking down at your gift. You gotta stop looking down at your gift because there are some gifts that are just uniquely yours. We're totally different. Our DNAs are different. Our gifts, our backgrounds, our abilities are different. You gotta stop looking down at your gifts. Sometimes what's keeping us from our abundance is we are keeping ourselves from going and serving and giving. Why? Because we think we are not good enough. Because, let lang ako eh. Wala akong kwenta. Hindi naman nila gusto to. Alamayin ako eh. But your uniqueness is actually your strength. 
And that's where it will start. We believe that there are riches in niches. That's the truth. There are riches in niches. I, as a doctor, just a little cuento. Is it okay? Uh, I am a general physician. And uh, after I graduated, my, I, I, after I graduated, trained a little, and then passed the board exams, I immediately went into practice. I felt that God wants to do something with my life. I don't know yet. Oh, how many here feels that way sometimes? I was faithful taking care of my patients. One patient at a time went into a clinic, and then I took care of each and every patient until each and every patient spoke about me, and then I was talking to families, couples, and... Uh, Eventually, I, I did not train, huh? I did not train as a specialist. And in, I don't know with you if you know that if you see a general physician, GP lang yan, that's what they call it. And, and pag, pag specialist, I am a trained yan. So I don't know with you, but sometimes I feel I'm a little person in terms of the medical community, but I believe God wants to do something in my life. And so I just remained faithful and I discovered the natural and holistic approach to health. I believe that we need to teach more than we just prescribe people. And I, I, I was just faithful and, and doing it. And from one patient, I, I got to teach a company and then another company and another company. I started my Facebook page where I teach at least post one single uh, tip, health tip every single day, Dido Lobaton MD in Facebook, at Dido MD in Instagram. And, and <laughs> yun lang, di ako tumigil. I was just faithful with the little that I have. That's all the things that I offer. I realized that also people need dead spiritual healing. People needed spiritual healing. And that's not really taught in med school but I feel and I have seen people heal from spirituality and so that's my niche that's why I do my healing retreats I do my health seminars with worship songs at the end I was just faithful I also wrote books don't let them lose you and I have a new book by brother with brother Bo Sanchez whole again I just kept on doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it just to update you this year God multiplied uh, w what I am doing uh, you don't have to be a specialist to teach health, the simplest things of health, like what kind of food to eat, how much water you need to, you need to take, yeah? What kind of good activities, how to have better sleep, yeah? And so I, this year, we were able to build a small clinic, but we cater to 6,000 seafarers, taking care of their health before they go on board. We teach them. And I believe God is not done with me yet. Just to end this, he said to Philip, that was said earlier, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. God already has in mind what he's going to do with you. God knows what he's going to do with your gift. Everybody say, God knows. Touch the person beside you, masakit, sabi sa kanya, God knows. He knows what He's gonna do with your gift. Even if you think it's little, even if you think it's insignificant, God knows what to do. He will multiply the little what you have. And on a ministerial note, just to, just to close this further, I was here last year. I was leading the 9 a.m. session here in PICC. But at the end of last year, I was feeling that God is moving us to get out of PICC. Oh, from our comfort zone to a courage zone. I felt the need. I felt God calling me and I was obeying God to move out of PICC and go somewhere else and build a feast. I asked our leaders, Brother Bo, Brother Alvin, ask for blessings, took, uh, talk to the parish people and, and ask for blessing if we could build the feast. And so last year, we built something new. We built something new. Last December 24, it has never been done. There has never been a Christmas feast. But my team and I, we gathered people December 24, 2017, and we started the Feast Mall of Asia. And with the little that we have, the little that we know, we started doing it every single Sunday, faithfully serving Him, faithfully serving people, and we we are in a better place. And uh, one more picture, nag-inayos na namin onte, medyo may lights na rin, and we are about 500, 600 people there. 
And uh, starting with our salvation was pushed through with the little yes that Mary said to the angel and to God. Be it unto me according to your word. Your little yes, your little gift, your little something. And so when my team, team and I said, yes, Lord, we will go and conquer a new territory for you. And that's where we are. And because of that, we're doing something new again with the little that we have. We're going to do something new again this year. By December 30, it has never been done again before. But by December 30, we're going to do a special New Year's feast in SMX. And you are all invited to be there. Very simply said, I believe that in the hands of God, your little gift will multiply. In the hands of God, your little gift will multiply. I want you to put your hands to your heart and pray with me. Just close your eyes and spend some time with God. Think of the little things that you have. Even your quirks and what unique thing God has implanted in your life and in, in your skill in what you do. Offer it to Him. Let God be God and let Him multiply what you have. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I offer these things to you. When I'm weak, you are strong. As I offer my gifts to you, go ahead and multiply it as you please. I am your servant. Let me serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. The guy that I'm going to introduce to you is so amazing. In fact, just to give a background about this guy, he's, he's an author, he's a speaker, he's also an entrepreneur. This guy does everything. He's the current president and CEO of Rampver Financials, which is a niche player in the financial service industry. All right. He also happens to be the director of several listed and non-listed firms in the country. But guess what? All right. This guy, even if he has so much achievements and accomplishments, he stayed, he, he's so humble. He's so loving. In fact, he considers his greatest legacy and treasures of his life, his family, his wife, and his three kids. So without further ado, I want you to give a warm welcome to our speaker today, Rex Mendoza. Good morning. It's really a blessing, an honor, and a privilege to be here today. We're talking about multiplying finances. I guess that's the core of the series. But I always go back to the question why. I always start with that. Why do we want the abundance? Why do we want the wealth? And for me, there are only two reasons. One is to give the very best for our loved ones. You'd like to be able to give the people you love what you never had. You want to give them the best of what, there is there, what is there to give. However, more than that, I guess this is where the rubber really meets the road, is that we need wealth and abundance to contribute, to give to people who need it. People who we don't even know. People who are not as blessed as us. See, God gave us the opportunity to give by optimizing on what he has given us, the talent, the resources, are we doing that? The blessing of giving happens when you're abundant. It's so difficult to give when you don't have enough. How many of you want to help a brother, a sister? How many of you want to help, you know, a driver, house help? We all want to help these people, but at times, we're all so fairly limited. And that's the reason why optimization is the key, maximization. Because if you rest and waste your talent and resources, you're not doing what God pleases. God wants you to optimize, to be able to give, because you were given more than many others in this world. That's the reason why the why has to be established quite firmly. And as you decide, okay, I want more now. I want to be abundant. I want to be wealthy. How do I do it? For me, the answer has always been, 
expanding your income potential. See, a lot of financial advisors would often start with budgeting, you know, controlling your lifestyle. That's very important. That's my number two. But my number one has always been expanding our income potential. You know why? Can you tell me why? Because it's more enjoyable. You see, it's so difficult to budget. How many of you find difficult, difficulty in budgeting? Difficulty in budgeting? This is December. Why are you talking about budgeting? Right? Remember your Christmas bonus? Alaala na din siya ngayon, di ba? Hindi pa tayo nakakarating ng akin si alaala na yan. So, I want people to expand their earning potential. And in expanding earning potential, there are so many ways. Now, this is a very, very important fact. Do you know that a common, common millionaire in U.S. dollar terms has seven streams of income? Seven streams of income. Well, many Filipinos have one. The common millionaire in dollar terms has seven streams of income. How many do you have? Think to it. If you just have one or two, you're way off. So you have to find streams of income that can help you get into a, an exponential level of income generation. And this guy, Budevic, said there are seven types of income. Number one is earned income, a job. Number two is profit income, coming from a business. Number three is royalty income, coming from something you've done, maybe a song you've written or sung. Or, you know, the Beatles are still getting royalties from their songs in the 60s. That's how royalty income escalates. Obviously, Queen has stopped playing, right? But Queen is getting a ton of money for the hits they made. How about property rental income? You set it up, you rent it out, and years on years you get inflows without getting involved. But the three last ones, the three last sources of income are the most important ones because they don't need you. They don't need your participation. That's interest income, dividend income, and capital gains income. So those seven are there for you. Like, which of these would you now get into? How many of you want to have income streams that you dream about but never do anything about? I ask a lot of people, how many of you want to put up their own business? Raise your hands, please. Own business, raise your hands. What did you do last week to make that happen? That's the clincher question. So while we know how to increase the income, we know the types, we encounter problems. You know, these are the big, big problems. Num number one, I call them excuse, excuses because they're not really problems. Number one, no time. No time for it. I'm working. I'm a family man. I'm a, you know, I'm a mother of six. I don't have time. Do you know that the common Filipino watches three hours of TV every day? If you don't watch too much of that on a weekly basis or a weekday basis, you cover it for the weekend. Some people don't watch TV anymore. They're into social media. Same screen. How much of your time is wasted on that? I ask many people, in your free time, do you spend money or earn money? I ask you now. Be honest with me. Answer that question. In your free time, do you spend money or earn money? Spend. spend. We spend money instead of earning it. Your free time can be used to earn money. And there are so many ways of doing that. But we don't think about it because we don't have time. You know, I'm proud to say I've started a lot of other businesses. I'm still a consultant and director in many companies. And people sometimes, even Brother Bo would say, you know, where do you get the time? You know what I tell, her, I tell him? I have never watched a telenovela in my life. I, I have not seen a single full episode of any telenovela. From Marimar to Please Be Careful With My Heart. Right? To now, the, the big one is what? Halik. 
Three hours per day is nine weeks of productive time a year. Nine weeks. I'm able to write for a newspaper column. I'm able to teach in graduate school. I'm able to start businesses. And I'm able to even mentor people for their businesses. Whether I'm paid or not, doesn't matter as long as I get to contribute. What do we learn from those telenovelas? Are you waiting for Cardo to have a grandson who's going to be a policeman also? <laughs> ano natututunan natin dyan? Why are we enjoying it too much? Yeah, I've asked a lot of people what they've learned watching all of those episodes. Na pag mabait ang driver mo sa'yo, siya pala ang tunay mong ama. <laughs> Yan ang natututunan natin dyan. You know, the big hit now is Halik. You know, I, I tell a lot of my, you know, the guys who work for me in the office, you know what I'll tell you? Doing that yourself is better. You know, planting a kiss on someone special, someone you love, is much, much better than watching somebody else do it and imagining it's you they're kissing. Number two, lack of knowledge and expertise. You can pick it up. You can attend seminars. You can pick up a book. You can have someone mentor you. No capital is one of the weakest, lamest excuses. There's so much capital out there, they're willing to find ideas. And I can tell you, you can build up the capital little by little. Many of you have money for a movie every weekend. Many of you have money for a Starbucks cup. But many of you are not building the capital you need to have some, something vital in the future. The last one would be the impediments. Oh, I have a job. I need a security. Who says you need to resign to put up a business? In my entire corporate career, except for the first few years, I had businesses and jobs. For me, there are two answers to having businesses and a job. Antidotes are one, performance. Somebody's paying me a salary, I have to give them more than what they're paying me. If I'm performing, who cares what I do on the side? Second, disclosure. I have to ask permission. I'm not going to hide anything. Because if they will allow me, I can get unleashed. That's the most important part. The solutions, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, be committed. If you want an earning stream, if you want a business, commit to it. How many of you can be solid enough to raise their hands today to say, 2019, I will have a new income stream or a new business? Raise your hand. Commit to this. Grab it by its horns and commit to it. It starts with commitment. And number two, create momentum. Motion creates emotion. Read. Attend gathering, seminars, very importantly, network. This requires a bit of courage. I'm going to ask some of you to change your set of friends. You know, if your set of friends are not inspiring you to do what you want, why stay with that group? I'm not saying, ayaw mo na sila. No, no, you know, drinking sessions, parties, you can be with them. But for inspiration and really moving forward into what you want to achieve, Choose real friends. You know, the reason why I get fired up in this so-called mastermind group of Brother Bo, you can just imagine who's there, who we meet minimum twice a month on a dinner or a lunch. We still travel together. We have gatherings with families. And we are with them every day. In those times, the chit-chat is very different. You know, an Edward Lee, a Juni Toreja, Dean Paxlapid, Larry Gamboa. I like to be like them when I grow up. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the feel that I have whenever I have those meetings with them. Diba, paglaki ko, para akong si Edward Lee. Yayaman din ako one day. Diba? So, choose good friends. And once you become successful, please share. Sharing starts a never-ending flow. Sharing starts a big, big flow that just continues from where it comes from 
You'll never have to know. To where it goes to, you decide. The first book was a four-month bestseller. Quite a blessing. This is the second book where I can say the rubber meets the road because it talks about my entrepreneurial journeys, my investments, and the way we run things in my family. Very important to me that I get to share this. Lessons, life experiences, business nuggets. But that's not what's important. You know what's important? Is where everything goes to. All the proceeds of the books that I have, ladies and gentlemen, go to the Mercy Ministries of Brother Bo, 100%. I don't get anything as an author. It is my blessing to be able to share what I have, what I've been blessed to people I don't even know. Very important that I share this because I don't have a lifetime of face-to-face -face and mentoring that I can do. That's why I do it to this. I love what Didoy preached earlier about the story of that young little boy where Jesus fed supposedly 5,000 men and the Bible says not including the women and the children. So it must have been so much more than 5,000. But here's the thing. The key takeaway that I, that, I, that I had when I was listening to Didoy preach that was, you know, Andrew, if you remember Andrew, Andrew was the one who suggested when the disciples asked, where are we going to find food to feed all of these people? And then Andrew said, here is this young boy. Here is this little boy who has five loaves and two fish. I don't know the significance of that number. But then Andrew asks a question that I believe all of us here ask every now and then. He said, how far will these go? Here's my paycheck. How far is this gonna go? I got so much bills. I got so much needs. I got, I got medical bills to pay for. I got tuition to pay for. I got loans to pay for. How far is my money gonna go? Have you ever asked that question? That's the same question that Andrew asked. How far is this gonna go? But in the hands of Jesus, in the hands of Jesus, that little turned into a lot. So what does that teach us? That maybe the little that you have right now, if you give it in the hands of Jesus, it can become a lot. I'm going to say this in another way because you didn't respond the way I wanted you to respond. When you give God your little, God is going to turn it into a big miracle. Amen. But here's the real miracle, all right? Because we all see that the miracle was how Jesus multiplied bread and He was able to feed 5,000 people, maybe more. But here's what I believe. That the real miracle was the fact that this little boy gave. Because we don't know that maybe what he gave was all he had. So can you imagine that this little boy was you know, walking around and then all of a sudden it was all he had but then he gave it all. And maybe that's what you need to do right now. To give God all that you have into his big hands so he can turn that little into a miracle. Are you ready to give all that you have to Jesus today? Are you ready to give God your all? All right, then everybody lift up your hands. In the presence of Jesus, everybody say, Dear Lord, I give you all that I have, all that I am, all my life, all the resources. I put all my trust in you. And I believe that you can turn my little into a big miracle. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ako si Kaloy Dimson, ang uh, operations head ng Anu. 
po ay uh, uh, isang naglingkod dito sa Anawim 2007. Napunta ko dito sa Anawim because uh, one time yung nurse ng Anawim naghahanap ng social worker. Uh, ako ay isang social work graduate. It's a big blessing na sinabi niya, ate kung gusto mo mag-social uh, work, pwede kang mag-apply. Kup-kup ko ako ng pare at ako po ay patulong-tulong lang po doon hanggang sa ako ay na-refer dito dahil na-find out nila talagang orphan ako. Punta po ako dito sa Anawin, na-upset po ako at saka na-depress. Pero sa pagtagal-tagal po po dito, naisip ko na ba't ako madidepress, ba't ako ma-upset. Instead, it's a big blessing for me and I'm really very grateful that we have Anawin. Hindi ako ng kapatid ko umatwi dito sa Anawin. Wala akong naramdaman na natakot ko sa'yo naman dito. Hindi na ako nagsisipak ng gaw, hindi ako nangangako. Hindi na ako nagluluto. Dito, kakain ka na lang. Maglikod sa ating matatanda, hindi yan basta-basta lang kasi kailangan ng mahabang pangunawa pa siya because we all know naman na ang mga lola dito ay they are abandoned and rejected by their families na talagang sila may mabibigat sa kanilang dibdib na. Nandito kami para yung mga bigat nila ay through communication, pinapapil namin na love namin sila at still sila ay importante pa dito sa mundo. Maraming mga challenges bilang isang mamahala. Una ito yung funding. Without fund, talagang hindi mo ma-push kung ano yung gusto mong proyekto na gagawin. Hindi rin maganda ang pag-aalaga kapag uh, walang pondo. Pinagdadasal po po lahat yun. Yung mga board of trustees, yung mga management and staff, pahabain niyo pa po ang buhay nila. Sabi ko, it's not because of anything else. I'm really very grateful there is Anna Wynne. Hindi kasi pag may nagpumunta ang tumutulong sa'yo, so, nagpinapupunta ka na rito. Siyempre, mapapasalamat ako sa mga tumutulong. Mga... Sa lahat ng mga donors na nagbibigay ng kanilang blessing dito sa Anawim, kami po ito gusto nagpapasalamat at uh, ito ay malaking biyaya na amin natatanggap. Your support, your help financially or in kind, grabe. Maraming mapupuntahan, maraming masisiyahan. And yung aming pagtulong sa mga elderly ay ma-extend pa, dadami pa. Dadami pang mga elderly ang matutulungan because of you. To all the donors and sponsors of, uh, and benefactors of Anogin, thank you so much for everything. And I hope you'll continue all the blessings you are giving us. And I thank God for all of you. Especially, thank you for all the love. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you for the love. God bless and thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. People need to hear this message. So many people, they just separate God from other areas of their lives. They want God to be limited on a Sunday. Monday to Saturday, you know, God off limits. No, we want to share the word that announce it, you know, from the rooftops. God wants to be from, you know, Sunday and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. He doesn't want to be limited in church. Hey friends, can, can I invite you to be my partner? to bless the world, to tell people that God is not just a Sunday God. He, he, you know, He needs to be involved and, you know, we're able to reach out to thousands of people, you know. We receive, I personally receive feedback that will just blow your mind. People who are saying, boy, watch your show, boy, you bless our family. Can, can you help me? I need your help. We, without you, I cannot do this, you know, and, and if you please pray for us. Number two, if you can support this ministry financially, airtime is very expensive, you know, and, and, but with your help, we can do it. Listen, for any amount whatsoever that you give to the ministry, our way of saying thank you is we'll send you talk one of this series. And if you give 2,000 pesos or more to the ministry, hopefully more, you know, we'll give you the entire series of, that, that you're taking up now plus my book, How to Prosper. 
It has, it has already blessed so many people and it will bless your life. We'll ship it to your home. And, and this help will go a long way in, in, in blessing people. The contact details are on the screen. You know, tell us, contact us, call us up, you know, email, whatever. Just, just go, go to our site and say, I, I want to be your partner. My invitation to you is to be a monthly giver because by giving monthly, we'll be able to project what we can do in the coming months, in the coming years of blessing the world and changing lives. Thank you so much for being my partner. Jesus was born in a humble stable into a poor family. Simple shepherds were the first witnesses to this event. In this poverty, heaven's glory was made manifest. The church never tires of singing the glory of this night. The Virgin today brings into this world the eternal, and the earth offers a cave to the inaccessible. The angels and shepherds praise Him, and the Magi advance with the star. To become a child in relation to God is a condition for entering the kingdom. For this, we must humble ourselves and become little. Even more, to become children of God, we must be born from above or born of God. Only when Christ is formed in us will the mystery of Christmas be fulfilled in us. O oh, marvelous exchange, man's creator has become man, born of the Virgin. We have been made sharers in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity.
What little you have in your life it doesn't have to be monetary could be something in your life that you you seem so insignificant seems so tiny seems so puny I want you to lift up whatever small thing that you have that you want to offer to God come on everybody lift it up in this place any dream even if it's a dream that you feel uh, you know doesn't doesn't have any hope I want you to lift it up in the presence of Jesus and then, and then say to Jesus dear Lord I lift this up in your presence today, trusting you, believing in you, and knowing that by faith, whatever little thing I have, you can multiply. I surrender to you all my dreams, all my hopes, all my plans. In Jesus' name, amen. happy to be here you learned something today by the way Kerygma conference Davao I came from there last night and um, arrived this morning from Davao crazy thing I didn't have a voice and so what I did was I, I spoke a few words after that they played my talk from Kerygma conference Manila in video and there were thousands upon thousands of people there so we had a, a feast video gigantic and it was fun um, really powerful. So, my dear brothers and sisters, thank, um, we, we just, we just want to celebrate um, what we heard today, you know. We really want you, you know, this is a very different prayer meeting. Have you noticed? Have you noticed? Have you ever heard in church uh, someone say, have seven streams of income? Have you? Have you ever you know, we're, we're different. We want you to prosper, not out of greed. We, we don't want that. That's going to kill you. We want you to prosper so that you can prosper others. That's the whole goal. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you don't need much. What you want to do is serve and bless more people. God bless you guys. Multiplication, that's what I will pray for you right now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, I pray for the multiplication of resources. I ask you, Lord, that whatever gift this person has, that you would multiply. Connections, multiply. I pray, Father God, that doors will be multiplied. Pathways will be multi multiplied. Lord God, you just do this. Let multiplication happen so that the overflow will be a blessing to the people around, to ministries around, the church, the poor will be blessed through my friend's generosity. Oh God, let grace multiply. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you so much. It was a beautiful series. I pray that you keep on joining us every single week to receive the blessing of God. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life.